graphic novel, Wikipedia audio. A graphic novel is a book made up of comics content. Although the word novel normally refers to long fictional works, the term graphic novel is applied broadly and includes fiction, non-fiction, and anthologized work. It is distinguished from the term comic book, which is generally used for comics periodicals. Fan historian Richard Kyle coined the term graphic novel in an essay in the November 1964 issue of the comics fanzine Kappa Alpha. The term gained popularity in the comics community after the publication of Will Eisner's essay Contract with God and the start of Marvel's graphic novel line and became familiar to the public in the late 1980s after the commercial successes of the first volume of Art Spiegelman's Mouse in 1986 and the collected editions of Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns in 1986 and Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons' Watchmen in 1987. The book industry study group began using graphic novel as a category in bookstores in 2001. The term is not strictly defined, though Merriam-Webster's full dictionary definition is a fictional story that is presented in comic strip format and published as a book, while its simplest definition is given as cartoon drawings that tell a story and are published as a book. In the publishing trade, the term extends to material that would not be considered a novel if produced in another medium. Collections of comic books that do not form a continuous story, anthologies, or collections of loosely related pieces, and even non-fiction are stocked by libraries and bookstores as graphic novels. The term is also sometimes used to distinguish between works created as standalone stories, in contrast to collections or compilations of a story arc from a comic book series published in book form. Definition In continental Europe, both original book-length stories such as La Rivalta dei Racca by Guido Bazzelli, and collections of comics have been commonly published in hardcover volumes, often called albums. Since the end of the 19th century it originated as the 1828 publication Histoire de M. Vieux Bois by Swiss caricaturist Rodolphe Topfer, and was first published in English translation in 1841 by London's Tilt and Bogue, which used an 1833 Paris Pirate Edition. The first American edition was published in 1842 by Wilson and Company in New York City using the original printing plates from the 1841 edition. Another early predecessor is Journey to the Gold Diggins by Jeremiah Saddlebags by brothers J.A.D. and D.F. Reed, inspired by the adventures of Obadiah Oldbuck. In 1894 Karen D. Ake broached the idea of a drawn novel in a letter to the newspaper L.E. Figaro and started work on a 360-page wordless book. In the United States there is a long tradition of reissuing previously published comic strips in book form. In 1897 the Hearst Syndicate published such a collection of The Yellow Kid by Richard Outcault and it quickly became a bestseller. The 1920s saw a revival of the medieval woodcut tradition, with Belgian Franz Maisreel cited as the undisputed king of this revival. His works include Passionate Journey. American Lind Ward also worked in this tradition, publishing God's Man, in 1929 and going on to publish more during the 1930s. Other prototypical examples from this period include American Milt Gross He Done Her Wrong, a wordless comic published as a hardcover book, and Unsee Main de Bont, a novel in sequential images composed of collage by the surrealist painter Max Ernst. Similarly, Charlotte Salomon's Life or Theater combines images, narrative, and captions.
The 1940s saw the launching of Classics Illustrated, a comic book series that primarily adapted notable, public domain novels into standalone comic books for young readers. In 1947, Fawcett Comics published comics novel number no. one, Anarcho, Dictator of Death, a 52 page comic dedicated to one story. In 1950, St. John Publications produced the digest sized, adult oriented picture novel It Rhymes with Lust, a film noir influenced slice of steel town life starring a scheming, manipulative redhead named Rust. Touted as an original full-length novel on its cover, the 128-page digest by pseudonymous writer Drake Waller, penciler Matt Baker and inker Ray Osrin proved successful enough to lead to an unrelated second picture novel, The Case of the Winking Buddha by pulp novelist Manning Lee Stokes and illustrator Charles Ropp. Presaging Will Eisner's multiple-story graphic novel A Contract with God, cartoonist Harvey Kurtzman wrote and drew the four-story mass-market paperback Harvey Kurtzman's Jungle Book, published in 1959. By the late 1960s, American comic book creators were becoming more adventurous with the form. Gil Kane and Archie Goodwin self-published a 40-page, magazine format comics novel, His Name Is. Savage in 1968 the same year Marvel Comics published two issues of the spectacular Spider-Man in a similar format. Columnist and comic book writer Stephen Grant also argues that Stan Lee and Steve Ditko's Doctor Strange Story in Strange Tales No. 13146 although published serially from 1965-1966, is the first American graphic novel. Similarly, critic Jason Sachs referred to the 13-issue Panther's Rage comics first known titled, self-contained, multi-issue story arc that ran from 1973 to 1975 in the Black Panther series in Marvel's Jungle Action as Marvel's first graphic novel. Meanwhile, in continental Europe, the tradition of collecting serials of popular strips such as The Adventures of Tintin or Asterix led to long-form narratives published initially as serials. By 1969, the author John Updike, who had entertained ideas of becoming a cartoonist in his youth, addressed the Bristol Literary Society, on the death of the novel. Updike offered examples of new areas of exploration for novelists, declaring I see no intrinsic reason why a doubly talented artist might not arise and create a comic strip novel masterpiece. History Gil Kane and Archie Goodwin's Black Mark, a science fiction slash sword and sorcery paperback published by Bantam Books, did not use the term originally, the back cover blurb of the 30th anniversary edition calls it, retroactively, the very first American graphic novel. The Academy of Comic Book Arts presented Kane with a special 1971 Shazam Award for what it called his paperback comics novel. Whatever the nomenclature, Black Mark is a one 19-page story of comic book art, with captions and word balloons, published in a traditional book format. It is also the first with an original heroic adventure character conceived expressly for this form. European creators were also experimenting with the longer narrative in comics form. In the United Kingdom, Raymond Briggs was producing works such as Father Christmas and the Snowman, which he himself described as being from the bottomless abyss of strip cartooning, although they, along with such other Briggs works as the more mature When the Wind Blows, have been remarketed as graphic novels in the wake of the term's popularity. Briggs notes, however, I don't know if I like that term too much. In 1976, the term graphic novel appeared in print to describe three separate works. 
Blood Star by Richard Corbin used the term to define itself on its dust jacket and introduction. George Metzger s Beyond Time and Again, serialized in underground comics from 1967 to 1972, was subtitled a graphic novel on the inside title page when collected as a 48-page, black and white, hardcover book published by Kyle and Weary. The digest-sized Chandler, Red Tide by Jim Steranko, designed to be sold on newsstands, used the term graphic novel in its introduction and a visual novel on its cover, although Chandler is more commonly considered an illustrated novel than a work of comics. The following year, Terry Nantier, who had spent his teenage years living in Paris, returned to the United States and formed Flying Buttress Publications, later to incorporate as NBM Publishing, and published Racket Rumba, a 50-page spoof of the noir, detective genre, written and drawn by the single-name French artist Loro. Nantier followed this with Inky Bilal as The Call of the Stars. The company marketed these works as graphic albums. The first six issues of writer-artist Jack Katz's 1974 Comics and Comics County series The First Kingdom were collected as a trade paperback, which described itself as the first graphic novel. Issues of the comic had described themselves as graphic prose, or simply as a novel. Similarly, Sabre, Slow Fate of an Endangered Species by writer Don McGregor and artist Paul Goulas the first graphic novel sold in the newly created direct market of United States comic book shops was called a graphic album by the author in interviews though the publisher dubbed it a comic novel on its credits page. Graphic album was also the term used the following year by Gene Day for his hardcover short story collection Future Day. 1920s to 1960s Modern Era Another early graphic novel, though it carried no self-description, was The Silver Surfer by Marvel Comics' Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. Significantly, this was published by a traditional book publisher and distributed through bookstores, as was cartoonist Jules Pfeiffer's Tantrum described on its dust jacket as a novel in pictures. First self-proclaimed graphic novels, 1976-1978 Adoption of the term European adoption of the term Criticism of the term Hyperbolic descriptions of longer comic books as novels appear on covers as early as the 1940s. Early issues of DC Comics All Flash Quarterly, for example, described their contents as novel-length stories and full-length four-chapter novels. In its earliest known citation, Comic book reviewer Richard Kyle used the term graphic novel in Kappa Alpha No. 2, a newsletter published by the Comic Amateur Press Alliance, and again in an article in Bill Spicer's magazine Fantasy Illustrated No. 5. Kyle, inspired by European and East Asian graphic albums, used the label to designate comics of an artistically serious sort. Following this, Spicer, with Kyle's acknowledgement, edited and published a periodical titled Graphic Story magazine in the fall of 1967. The Sinister House of Secret Love No. 2, one of DC Comics' line of extra-length, 48-page comics, specifically used the phrase a graphic novel of gothic terror on its cover. In response to criticism regarding the content of comic books, and to the establishment of the industry's self-censorship comics code authority, an underground alternative comics movement was created. Footnotes
the term graphic novel began to grow in popularity months after it appeared on the cover of the trade paperback edition of Will Eisner's essay Contract with God and Other Tenement Stories. This collection of short stories was a mature, complex work focusing on the lives of ordinary people in the real world based on Eisner's own experiences. The term graphic novel was intended to distinguish it from the traditional serialized nature of comic books, with which it shared a storytelling medium. One scholar used graphic novels to introduce the concept of graphiation, a newly coined term used to describe graphic expression or visual enunciation. Graphiation refers to the theory that the entire personality of an artist is visible through his or her visual representation of a certain character, setting, event, or object in a novel, and as a means to examine and analyze drawing style. Even though Eisner's A Contract with God was finally published in 1978 by a smaller company, Baronet Press, it took Eisner over a year to find a publishing house that would allow his work to reach the mass market. Eisner cited Lind Ward's 1930s woodcuts as an inspiration. The critical and commercial success of A Contract with God helped to establish the term graphic novel in common usage, and many sources have incorrectly credited Eisner with being the first to use it. These included the Time magazine website in 2003, which said in its correction, Eisner acknowledges that the term graphic novel had been coined prior to his book. But, he says, I had not known at the time that someone had used that term before. Nor does he take credit for creating the first graphic book. One of the earliest contemporaneous applications of the term post Eisner came in 1979, when Black Mark's sequel published a year after A Contract with God though written and drawn in the early 1970s was labeled a graphic novel on the cover of Marvel Comics Black and White Comics magazine Marvel Preview No. 17, where Black Mark the Mind Demons premiered its 117-page contents intact, but its panel layout reconfigured to fit 62 pages. Following this, Marvel from 1982 to 1988 published the Marvel graphic novel line of 10x7 trade paperbacks although numbering them like comic books, from number 1 to number 35. Marvel commissioned original graphic novels from such creators as John Byrne, J. M. Demetis, Steve Gerber, graphic novel pioneer McGregor, Frank Miller, Bill Senkiewicz, Walt Simonson, Charles Vess, and Bernie Wrightson. While most of these starred Marvel superheroes, others, such as Rick Veach's Heartburst featured original SF slash fantasy characters, Others still, such as John J. Muth's Dracula, featured adaptations of literary stories or characters, and one, Sam Glansman's A Sailor's Story, was a true life, World War II naval tale. Cartoonist Art Spiegelman's Pulitzer Prize winning Mouse, helped establish both the term and the concept of graphic novels in the minds of the mainstream public. Two DC Comics book reprints of self-contained miniseries did likewise, though they were not originally published as graphic novels, Batman, The Dark Knight Returns, a collection of Frank Miller's four-part comic book series featuring an older Batman faced with the problems of a dystopian future, and Watchmen a collection of Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons' 12-issue limited series in which Moore notes he set out to explore, amongst other things, the dynamics of power in a post-Hiroshima world. These works and others were reviewed in newspapers and magazines, leading to increased coverage. Sales of graphic novels increased, with Batman, The Dark Knight Returns, for example, lasting 40 weeks on a UK bestseller list. Outside North America, 
Eisner's A Contract with God and Spiegelman's Mouse led to the popularization of the expression graphic novel as well. Until then, most European countries used neutral, descriptive terminology that referred to the form of the medium, and not the contents. In Francophone Europe for example, the expression bands dessinies which literally translates as drawn strips is used, while the terms strip verhal and tegnaziri are used by the Dutch slash Flemish and Scandinavians respectively. European comics studies scholars have observed that Americans originally used graphic novel to describe everything that deviated from their standard, 32-page comic book format, meaning that all larger-sized, longer Franco-Belgian comic albums, regardless of their contents, fell under the heading. American comic critics occasionally refer to European graphic novels as Eurocomics, and attempts were made in the late 1980s to cross-fertilize the American market with these works. American publishers Catalan Communications and NBM Publishing released translated titles, predominantly from the backlog catalogs of Cast Ehrman and Les Humanoids Associes. Some in the comics community have objected to the term graphic novel on the grounds that it is unnecessary, or that its usage has been corrupted by commercial interests. Writer Alan Moore believes. It's a marketing term, that I never had any sympathy with. The term comic does just as well for me. The problem is that graphic novel just came to mean expensive comic book and so what you'd get is people like DC Comics or Marvel Comics because graphic novels were getting some attention, they'd stick six issues of whatever worthless piece of crap they happened to be publishing lately under a glossy cover and call it the She-Hulk graphic novel. It's a perfect time to retire terms like graphic novel and sequential art, which piggyback on the language of other, wholly separate mediums. What's more, both terms have their roots in the need to dissemble and justify, Thus both exude a sense of desperation, a gnawing hunger to be accepted. Author Daniel Rayburn wrote, I snicker at the neologism first for its insecure pretension the literary equivalent of calling a garbage man a sanitation engineer and second because a graphic novel is in fact the very thing it is ashamed to admit, a comic book, rather than a comic pamphlet or comic magazine. Writer Neil Gaiman, responding to a claim that he does not write comic books but graphic novels, said the commenter meant it as a compliment, I suppose. But all of a sudden I felt like someone who'd been informed that she wasn't actually a hooker, that in fact she was a lady of the evening. Responding to writer Douglas Wolk s quip that the difference between a graphic novel and a comic book is the binding. Bone creator Jeff Smith said, I kind of like that answer. Because graphic novel. I don't like that name. It's trying too hard. It is a comic book. But there is a difference. And the difference is, a graphic novel is a novel in the sense that there is a beginning, a middle, and an end. The Times writer Giles Corin said, to call them graphic novels is to presume that the novel is in some way higher than the karmi of work, and that only by being thought of as a sort of novel can it be understood as an art form. Some alternative cartoonists have coined their own terms to describe extended comics narratives. The cover of Daniel Klaus Ice Haven describes the book as a comic strip novel, with Klaus having noted that he never saw anything wrong with the comic book. The cover of Craig Thompson's Blankets calls it an illustrated novel.